Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Somebody was asking me the other day about uh, Charlotte Tilbury and the um, new instant eye palette, which I think is not yet on sale, although I've seen some YouTube uh, reviews, unboxings of it. So I think the favored few uh, are being sent palettes in advance to uh, review. Um, and I was saying I, I didn't intend to get it when it came out because I don't really um, buy Charlotte Tilbury now. Uh, and then I realized I actually have got quite a few Charlotte Tilbury items still lurking around in my makeup drawers. Uh, and so I thought Charlotte Tilbury was a brand and my thoughts about it that I might just revisit and chat about today. Um, those of you who watch this channel, listen to this channel a little bit more regularly, will know that essentially my makeup tastes are high-end luxury. Um, and I don't really put Charlotte Tilbury in that category. Uh, I think she has quite an interesting niche in the um, makeup, uh, skincare, beauty uh, realm, as it were, because her prices and her concept and her presentation are very much um, not drug store. Uh, to some extent, I think her presentation particularly and her packaging is very high end. Um, and her price point uh, certainly isn't cheap. Um, she's appreciably less expensive uh, than Tom Ford and uh, I would say Chanel and Dior as well, although she's getting up to that level. So um, it's quite a, an interesting level, I, I think. I'm always struck when I actually go into a department store uh, which stock Charlotte Tilbury. I'm thinking particularly of Selfridges and bear in mind it's a while since I've been in there because of COVID, um, certainly not since the beginning of this year. But generally um, the counter is very busy and uh, dominated by quite young um, customers, you know, teenage, well, well yeah, teenage actually, the sort of age group who, apart from some who will visit Mac, you don't really see clustering around the other um, makeup brands in department stores. Um, they would be more uh, drugstore or online purchasers. Um, but I think there are older uh, women like myself who buy Charlotte Tilbury. And um, because it's a very curated um, presentation, it actually, I would have thought, appeals to that age more. So for all sorts of reasons, it's, it's a, and of course, Charlotte Tilbury herself is very middle-aged. Um, uh, uh, it, it's an interesting brand. Um, I've had a real love-hate relationship. Talked about it before. Um, some of the products I have liked, do like, as is quite apparent by what you see in front of you, products that I've kept. Um, I hate the, the, the service, both in her bespoke shops and department stores. I have found consistently her um, sales assistants are not very knowledgeable about their own products and are fairly dismissive of you if you're older than 30. Um, I do, on the other hand, really rate her kind of presentation, packaging and the concept. You know, the the original range, the concept of buying into a look, um, be it rock chick or upmarket girl or whatever they were called, uh, with a palette, with a pencil, with a cheek colour, the whole thing just ready to go was fantastic. And I still think, in a way, the kind of multi-use palettes um, are what I most appreciate. This one here um, is called the Instant Look in a Palette. So that's the Charlotte Tilbury ethos um, in a jar, as it were. Um, you've supposedly got everything you need 
to put on your face in five minutes in one palette. And I think she originally brought these out, I think in only one colorway, possibly two, very much geared to um, fair skinned women. I think that's another aspect of the range, although the advertising does feature women of color. Um, my casual observations of the um, colour range is that it's more geared towards fair-skinned European women and Charlotte herself of course a natural redhead is very fair-skinned indeed. Now this palette you can see I use have used well um, because I do travel a lot normally and it's useful to have everything in one palette. It's not very exciting um, you know two pink blushes um, quite pale, a, a taupe and a, a more shimmery colour for the eye um, and a kind of base or um, for the eye, a, a highlighter and a, a nice toned, cool toned bronzer for the fair skinned. Um, this now appears in several colourways, so you can definitely get one which would look better if you're um, darker toned uh, skin. And uh, I don't know how much these retail for, but um, not cheap, but that's one that I have continued to use. This summer, I actually decided I wanted a kind of blush, um, highlighter, um, bronzer combined palette. And I got this, which was called the Glowing Pretty Skin Palette. I think that was released this year. Um, you can see I haven't used this a ton. I do like it, but, and this is what I think for me the problem is, um, it's all a bit middle of the road. I mean, it it's good, but not special. Do you know what I mean? Um, and for the price point, which as I say, is a little cheaper than the really high range that I love, but not so cheap that you can say, oh, well, I don't mind, you know, throwing that away. Um, that's what kind of disappoints. So, you know, it's a pretty colour. It's a nice consistency. Um, but it's nothing remarkable. Um, I have had over the years a number of her kind of highlighter bronzer palettes in the, the really vintage packaging. I love her packaging. Um, I think her lipstick packaging um this being an example amongst my favorites it's not super heavy it's quite lightweight so um some people wouldn't love that i partic don't particularly want a really heavyweight lipstick because it just adds to the weight in my already overweighted handbag um the ct logo on the top i just love this vintage rose gold ridging and she did a lot of palettes with this including the um, Instant Eye palette palettes, which are those kind of long ones, the length of the Urban Decay um, kind of trendsetter ones, um, but much more dainty with, I think, four sets of three colours for an eye look. And I've had, I think, two of those, but not kept them. I think ultimately those large eye palettes aren't to my taste, but I do love the packaging um, you can see this lippy is reasonably well used, given I'm not a lipstick girl. What is this one? Um, golly, I can't read. My eyesight is terrible these days. I can't read even what that is. Kidman's Kiss, I think. So it's one of that lipstick range that were called after various film star clients. Um... And I confess I bought this one, which is another of her lipstick ranges, largely for the leopard packaging and the fact that this was called um, Red Hot Susan, which I thought was a wonderful um, title for lipstick. I think it's called after Susan Sarandon. I haven't really used this one. Uh, it's a bit too terracotta -y, actually, for my taste. How stupid am I buying a lipstick whose colour I don't much like? Uh, because of the packaging that I love. I've had her foundations. I think I've had two over the years. I was looking on the website and uh, the foundation range seems to have uh, changed recently. I think I've had one uh, which 
was called the Magic Foundation, but it's described now as being a demi-mat, and I recall it being reasonably glowy, a bit in the kind of consistency and look of the Chanel Le Beige range, but not nearly as good, uh, and slightly drying, I found. So maybe it was demi-mat. Um, one of the uh, products I bought... On the basis, I will say, of a recommendation by Wayne Goss, um, he loves Charlotte Tilbury. I often rate his recommendations, but I have to say, I think he probably loves the Charlotte Tilbury, the woman, um, <laughs> which is why he rates all of the products as, you know, the best in the world. He um, recommended, I can't remember what it was called. It, was it Instant Glow or something like that? healthy glow and it was supposed to be a product that adapted to your natural unisex product adapted to your natural complexion um well mine adapted to make me look as if i had the same skin as um donald trump uh which was not a good look um i literally threw that product away it was so bad um and yeah uh, I haven't liked the foundation products that much at all, although a lot of people do. Uh, I do um, have her Airbrush Flawless Finish um, Finishing Powder. I'm not a great powder wearer, um, but again, love the packaging. You know, the little star, the Charlotte Tilbury. This is a very nice finishing powder. On the rare occasions I'm doing a makeup that I really want to set, then I do use this um, and I rate it. Uh, and those of you who've watched my brow video recently will know I've been trying out the um, brow product. Uh, it's okay, but it's not any better than the drugstore versions, beautifully packaged though it is to justify it being about three times the price of the drugstore ones. Um, the highlighter, the liquid highlighter I've got here is called the uh, Beauty Light Wand. Um, my issue with this is it looks very, very nice on actually, which is why I bought it. I saw it in somebody's video and loved the kind of strobey look. Um, very, very pretty. Uh, it's just messy. Um, I don't really like these sponge applicators and you can see, um, you know, it kind of all leaks out of the tube. I have had that for a bit. Uh, the other thing I had to learn that you have to pat this in, not rub, or else it kind of rubs off your um, blush underneath, which is not too good. But that was just my ham-fisted um, application rather than a defect in the product. Um, I've never had one of the uh, small quads, the kind of original eye products. I've looked at them many times uh, when I can push my way through the hordes of teenagers at the counter. I don't know if the testers kind of different from the reality, because the reality is people, when I say the reality, the real palette, if you buy one, the testers I've always found to be rather dry Um and not worth the money, although they're nicely curated, as I say. Um, but maybe she doesn't, maybe they don't age well when they're exposed as testers on the counter, because I know a lot of people love those palettes. Uh, and I have to say the consistency of the, you know, the large palettes, the instant eye palettes, um, was perfectly good, just nothing special, as it were. She does the little eye pots of cream as well, um, and I think she was behind when she was a consultant for Tom Ford, the early Tom Ford ones, which were beautiful, much nicer than the ones that are pushed out now. Hers were clearly inferior. They're in smaller pots and they're much more watery, although beautiful colours. But for the price differential, I think they're about £20. They were good value. And I did have some, but um, kind of used them up or threw them out. Um my eternal bugbear is the skin cream, um, magic cream. Um, don't give me magic formulas, give me science. Uh, but again, beautifully packaged. The consistency and smell, however, remind me of Nivea and it's a great deal more um, expensive. Uh, it, it's plainly Nivea with some highlighter put in because when you do put it in 
on your skin glows, but I suspect that's um, just down to the colouring product. So there we are, Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I'm sorry to be bitchy about a range um, because there are, there, there's some good stuff. And I, as I say, I love her packaging and her presentation. I think it's impeccable. Um, and you can get a little bit of everything um, at the Charlotte Tilbury counter if you can manage to, way, to fight your way to the front of it. Um, but overall, it's not up there with the Lux brands. So interested to have your thoughts in the comments. A thumbs up if you uh, stayed to the end and enjoyed and speak to you all soon. Bye for now.